All right, good evening, everybody. Before we take our seats, I'd just like you to talk to God briefly and say, Father, send a word to me to, tonight. Send me a personal word tonight. Can you talk to God and say, Father, send a personal word to, to me tonight. Thank you, Father. Can you pray where you are? Let God hear your heartbeat. I say, Father, send the word to me tonight. Let the light of your word enter my heart. Let it refurbish me. Let it change me. Let it change something about me tonight. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. In Jesus' name we pray. I said in Jesus' name we pray. The Bible says that he sent his word and the word healed them and delivered them from all their diseases. Tonight I prophesy that every kind of discomfort you may have had before now stops now in the name of Jesus Christ. And that at the end of this teaching today and this conversation in service today, a healthier you will come out. Amen. Spirit, soul, and body. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please, you may be seated in God's presence. God bless you. you Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm going to take myself easy tonight. Praise God. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be a little very calm. Yeah. Well, how's your day been? Pressure? Are you comfortable? Did you get any news? Did you read any mail that made you happy? Yes, sir. Amen. Someone said he got a lot. Amen. That's the spirit. Let me not forget to say happy Valentine's Day in areas for those that understand the import of Valentine. And um, let me also thank that United Mistral for that beautiful Are we, are we live? Yeah. Let's give them a round of applause and appreciate them. And that beautiful song from our beloved sister, can we give her a round of applause? They're precious. I used to know that song many years ago, so it was a lot of refreshing for me to hear the song again tonight. All right, are you ready for God's word? Are we ready for God's word? Yes, sir. What we are going to do tonight is a little different. We are talking about relationship talks. But I planned, and I hope it works, you know, that before we dive into the word session or the teaching, I will say, I want to do revision with us. Yes, sir. Let's know where we are first. If, before we add more to the... You know when you keep learning, 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 and you don't revise... What you have learned, you can forget, you know. So, let's just do a small revision. So far, so good. How has it been? How has the teaching been for you? We're talking about capital, social capital, and lasting relationships. How has it been for you? What has blessed you the most? And um, we'll quickly look at that. Then I'll take quickly responses, and then we go forward. Can I start by asking... How has it been? What has been the strongest thing you have learned personally? Anybody? Who goes first? Yes, sir. Yes. Can we get a microphone, please? Brother, brother um, David, help me bring your microphone and help me service the speakers, please. Yes, sir. Fantastic. The finance that we have is inside of us. And our money it should not be what can stop us from getting to our dreams. Fantastic. Fantastic. Can we give me a round of applause and appreciate him for that? Are you still talking or that's it? Fantastic. Yes. Give him the microphone now. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. The second thing is... Wait for him, please. Sir, uh, yeah. You've, you've helped us to have this understanding is that there are social capital will help you to value relationship better. 
and it, it, it plays a value on you that you you it will make you to be irresistible. Yeah. And like you know your worth. Yes. And you know your worth. Then yes. Then you can, like, it's very true. If you know the capital you are bringing to the table, you and someone wants to go into business, you are bringing 100 million. The person is bringing 10,000. You know there's a way you behave yourself. You will know that you have something of worth. Uh huh. So, social capital is very key. Yeah? Yes, sir. Go ahead, please. Concerning what you said, because, like, the events that we have, you know, you showed us something. Yes. Talking about a man's ego. So, the social capital in that man would help him to be able to see ahead. That's right. And also to plan for his That's very right. So, he's referring to a video we watched on Monday at Valentine's Day. How that the man who was being insulted or threatened, that should pro provoke him. That thing in itself is capital to get, get him what he needs to get in his life. Thank you very much, Thank sir. You. Thank you. Let's give him a round of applause and appreciate him. Any other contribution? What have you, yes. What have you learned? We are doing a revision of the teaching so far. I don't want us to just keep going on because I want to enter on relationship talk now. Yes, Let's finish capital. Work. Yeah. Uh, a period of teaching has actually opened my eyes to three things basically that I haven't shared with someone this afternoon. First thing I would have taught what the, the general uh, knowledge of what capital is for business usually used to be money. And that has been what uh, I also have been carrying for years until Reverend explained deeply that it is not about that. In fact, it's just one of several capital that one is supposed to have to go into a business. And it is. The one profound one that he mentioned was a good name of how somebody can just have money or have a group of persons come around and say, we want to do a business, but we need a name or a face of somebody that is trustworthy or has public social capital or influence, so as we say, to say, okay, let's put this person's name or let's flaunt this person's face as the owner or as a brand ambassador. And if you want to check it clearly in our day-to-day -day activities, going about advertising, you see that these things are almost everywhere. You see people who are, that are very known being called to come and become brand ambassadors. If they don't know you, they won't, be, they won't call you to be brand ambassador. That's right. If you don't have some measure of influence over a certain number of people or in a specific, a specific field, for instance, they might not call you up to that such level. So it, it got me to understand that, really, the power of a good name, aside from what the Bible calls it, is as strong and potent, even to date, in business as it is. So that part already started making me thinking of how I should start protecting my dignity and my name for future reference and for now, as yes. it is. Yes. Secondly, is the fact that um, you mentioned um, how, how uh, wisdom is the end point or is the strongest of everything I wrap it up in the conclusion of social capital. Yes, sir. And that made me to understand that you can have everything but not have wisdom. And the bishop broke it down to also say that there are acts of wisdom and there's a spirit of wisdom. Mm -hmm. There are things that you can be doing from now that you, you might not even know that it's actually an, uh, an act of wisdom. But when the spirit of wisdom stays and dwells with you, that means there's likelihood that you might not miss out on any chance That's right. to do the right thing. That's right. So that, uh, that part of um, the learning also got me to be longing for wisdom more than any other thing that we can look out for. So in general, saying for myself, in conclusion, I would say that uh, two things got me really going on it, which is the wisdom that God gives. Yeah. And um, in the, in, uh, in us, not this teaching though, but uh, other lessons that Bishop has taught us about um, knowledge and wisdom is that God is able to give us these things, but there's also a human part to play in trying to get wisdom or having understanding as or knowledge as the thing is. There's a human part whereby you have to also expose yourself to a measure of uh, reading to know what is relevant or what is needed to be able to carry on in any field that you are going into. And there's that of the spirit of God, of spirit of wisdom that dwells with a man and it only comes from God. So those two things are just key for me and I, don't, I, don't, I can't miss out on... Uh, any other thing or a chance to express Fantastic. myself. Thank Fantastic. you so much. Let's give me a round of applause also and appreciate him, please. Let me take one or two more. Any lady? Yeah. Stadiola. Thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, words have actually 
learned from this social capital and the lasting relationships that I can't, it keeps ringing on my head, is that we should not use spiritual capital to cover up our social capital deficiency. And um, the reason is that when I was still a youth, that social capital in some areas, I didn't have it. So it was just God that helped me through. It will have affected me and affected the foundation of my marriage. Mm. So, mm. and um, secondly, it, it now helped me, it opens my eyes to, 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 to the extent that right from the childhood of my children, I should be able to impact Come into them social capital. Brilliant. So I should not just focus on spiritual capital alone. Mm. I should also be able to teach them social capital from home. Fantastic. Oh my God. I feel so blessed by that. That's so refreshing there. Thank you very much. One more. Anybody? If you, have, if you don't have wealth, okay. Okay. <laughs> Let him take. Yes, please. Thank you. Yes. God. Hallelujah. All right. So um, people have said a lot. But there are two things that um, stood out for me, okay, and that has gotten me into serious meditation. What did I? This social capital has done for me. The fact that it's not even anything spiritual. <laughs> the 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 with title does not symbolize anything spiritual. Have made me such and such, and I discover that in this world that we are, it's better for you to focus on the intangible. So that you can get the tangible. Correct. So that's one thing. Then you made mention of the fact that uh, this capital that we are talking about makes uh, for us to get the best outcome of this social capital. We have to understand uh, the art of the investor. Yes. Which is God. Yes. The investor here is God. He is investing in us. So uh, if anybody wants to invest. He has to look at what you have to offer. Mm. So, are there things in our lives that God will look at and will say, okay, I want to make you a billionaire for the purpose of the kingdom. Mm. Are there things in your life, because it's not only about the spiritual. You know, you said something about the fact that your spiritual life, you're speaking in tongues, if it's not producing character in you, then it does not make sense. Yes, sir. So, one thing I've been able to discover, and also from Isaiah, like I said, Truth meditation, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. That place was talking about the spirit of the Lord. And it's surprising that the first spirit, the spirit of the Lord will exhibit is wisdom. Mm. So, so to say, I would say the ground social capital yeah. for life, in quotes, is God. Hallelujah. Is the word Amen. and the spirit. Praise. Which God. now makes bring us to the social capital which you say, which yeah. is wisdom. That's right. Thank you, sir. Can we give him a round of applause and appreciate him? We have a response from YouTube. It says, this is from Adekunle Oreolua. It says, to be honest, it has been mind-blowing. The preaching has been wonderful. I've learned a lot about capital, especially social capital. Praise God. Very good. Thank God we are learning something, you know, a little different. And I want us to just peruse one more time at the subject. So I wrote some questions here. I said... Why is social capital very important? Who can tell me why? Why is social capital very important? If you are just joining us today, we have been discussing a subject on social capital and lasting relationships. And we've done about three sessions of this conversation, and we're very, very outright and forthright in the discussion that there are different kinds of capital. There's financial capital, there's spiritual capital, there's emotional capital, and there are different kinds. And we said, don't cover up for your um, social capital with spirit, your deficiencies with spiritual capital. You know how a lot of people just come to church, just be using. You are having low self-esteem. People will think that you are spiritual. You can't wait after service to greet people. It's because you have a deficiency of interaction. You have not been trained to relate well. You think it's just how you are. No, it's that something is missing. Something is missing. There's no need to be too confused about it. Something is missing about maybe yourself. You, you have low self-esteem. You can't use praying in tongues to cover low self-esteem. After finishing that praying in tongues, you must come back 
and let it affect your self-esteem. Do, do you understand what I'm trying to say here? Yeah, very important. Very important. If you have anger issues and you have been praying in tongues and you still have anger issues, that praying in tongues has not been useful for you. Oh, yeah. Yes. Your, your, that praying in tongues is not an end. It's a means to an end. It's a way to draw from the supernatural life into your natural life. Do you get what I'm saying? To draw strength from your spiritual resourcefulness into your natural resourcefulness. For example, if you are a student and you are not able to understand things very well, or when you read things, you don't remember very well, and you are speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues is not an end in itself. It's to be able to open up your mind, to be able to retain whatever you read. You will still read after speaking in tongues. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Abi? Eh? So what was the speaking in tongues for? It's to be able to make your mind clear enough to be able to retain what you read. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say here. As parents, for example, we must be very intentional to training our children to have character that is consistent with progress. Some children grow up knowing anger. You know, I, I, and, I know, and I know something, that, like I was saying jokingly the other day, some parents didn't even give their children good looks. So that child is still struggling with looking in the mirror from childhood. Praying in tongues won't cancel that suddenly. They'll be looking at each other, they say, look at your big head, big head. Whereas, it's something that you probably not teach the child. The child now starts to struggle. They call me big head in school. Big head. Mommy, my, why is my head so big? <laughs> and then the child struggles with low self-esteem. They say, come and do something. I can't do it all. I can't do it all. Always feeling is not capable. It is the deficiency or deficit of social capital. That's not something that we should dodge from. It's true. So there are things you should teach. Perhaps says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children and his children's children. The inheritance you should leave is not just speaking in tongues and say, fear the Lord. The fear the Lord that does not convert itself to character is a problem. Please, do you understand what I'm trying to say here? So sometimes we just cover up everything, cover up everything. We are all Christians born again, all everything just born again. It's not like that, too. You know, some people they just go with spiritual capital to the office or to school and just be speaking in tongues. Your spirituality should affect your relationship life. How you greet people, how you are loving. How you are caring. Do you know what I'm saying, sir? Yeah. So, we've said a lot. Now, I asked the question. I said, why is the subject of social capital therefore very important? Somebody has said something. I think I want to give a chance. Why is it important? Yeah. Let's take Minister to. Okay. You will, you will explain yourself. I like that the lady wants to say something. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, there's, there's something that you always say. Um, you always say, you said, preparation always meets opportunity. Yes, sir. So, what I've come to realize is that, you know, you, you keep saying these things like, there are sometimes maybe we are in training, and you are saying that if you don't train yourself, yes. you can't give what you don't have. That's right. Okay, uh, there are some things that we've been watching, that I've been with some people, and I've come to realize that um, you coming out in life to do things and not performing well is that you have not done your boobs yes your so back. that social capital yes sir. is you developing yourself yes sir. having enough capacity having enough understanding so yes, by the time sir. you are now going there you now pray and everything and you, forces you, you, of you life support you, you. when you are saying it and in, in our teaching that you said spiritual and physical yes sir. they work line in line yes sir. so as you are speaking in tongues you are doing you are developing that's yourself. right so yeah. when the social capital is there what the spirit does is it complements it that's right you know, and so makes it outstanding yes. fantastic do you understand what we're saying here? Please, look at it, for example. You go for a beauty contest. Esther. Eh? You know that she spoke in tongues, she prayed as the child of Jews and all that. Everybody was beautiful. What made them narrow down on Esther? She had the natural beauty, but she had spiritual support. She had told the whole Jews, fast for me. Don't think that she came there with uh, scarf, thank you, or long earrings and say, the Lord bless you, my king. Mm -mm. She came like a queen. I can't do it. Let me just try. You know? She came. Do you understand? She did all the queen, queen activity. My Lord, maybe, you know, wear beads on her waist. She, you know, shake her, you know, flaunt what her mama gave her. Am I making some sense? So she did all that and then the hand of God supported her forward. Do you understand? So it's not to say that ah, spirituality will cover her for beauty. She was fine girl. But she had something extra. Extra. 
That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. She had the language. Did you see how she lured the king in? Say, let the king just be patient with me. Please, let the king be patient with me. Let the king... She, know she was using sweet words. You, it's just because you are the wife, king of, wife of the king. You will just talk anyhow. No. No. So social capital is important because a great percentage of your success in life is tied with your relationships. Your relationship, the people you relate to. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Yes. Um, Lambda, you want to say something? Please, let her. Hallelujah. Another reason why I think social capital is important is because it helps you to realize the value that you carry. That's right. That you carry. And as well, please value that around you. Fantastic. It helps you know your worth as a person. And then it also helps you extend value to other people. You see, people that have self-esteem and have personal respect for themselves respect other people. That's what it is. Most people that disregard other people don't respect themselves. That's the truth. You can't just see someone and be talking down at the person. It's because you don't have dignity for yourself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you have small, you will talk with dignity to other people. You will cast some of that value on other people. Very important. Very important. Let me tell you something. Eh? Character is very key. It's very key. It has its measure in finance. All right. Thank you for that contribution, man. The next question I have here is what types of capital do we have? What types of capital do we have? What types of capital do we have? Eh? Okay. Hmm. Look at what this gentleman says also. Somebody online. He says, for individuals, social capital is important because it's an important source of power and influence that helps people to get by and get ahead. Fantastic. Fantastic. People get what I'm saying then. I feel very happy that it's clearer. Yes, sir. <laughs> I feel very happy. God bless you. Yeah. Um, so I asked a question. I said, what types of social capital do we have? What types? Yes, of social, of social, or, beg your pardon, what types of social capital do we have? <laughs> so let me explain. Let's first of all start. What types of capital do we have? We said we have financial capital. We have social capital. We have emotional capital we have spiritual capital that's different now, i'm now saying what types of social capital i eh yes sir character very key very key and now when i said is what access i told you about it you remember i said access and now when you have is good name good name it's a capital it's a capital the bible says in proverbs chapter 21 22 verse 1 it says a good name is better than riches than riches. You know, and I asked us a question. One million dollars versus your spouse. Which one will you take? <laughs> you remember I asked you a question. Your life or your wife, which one would you take? <laughs> Don't forget what we're saying about valuing intangible things. Valuing intangible things. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, why is social capital important? Or why, I mean, how many types of social capital do we have? So I've said some now. We said, we said some. We said character. We said loyalty. We said access. We said good name. Which other kind of character, I mean, social capital do you have? Of course, we know wisdom is there. Praise God. Wisdom is a very powerful social capital. Do you know good looks is a capital? Yes, good looks is a capital. If you have good looks, you have something to show. Praise God. Talking well is a capital. Yes, good communication skills is a capital. You will be an MC for Miss World if they, have, they, they need one. Beauty. The ladies that stand on Okwebi Allen at night are selling capital. Do you agree with me? Yes, sir. Don't you see them? Is you only missing them? Why? They are presenting capital. Yes, sir. It's physical capital. Do you get what I'm saying here? Yeah. So all of that is the different. I'm just talking about what kinds of social capital should we then be looking for? Do you know patience is a capital? Good self-esteem is a capital. A good sense of humor is a capital. Any ability or resourcefulness that you can do. A great mind is a capital. Good mind. Praise the Lord. 
Tolerance is a capital. Don't forget I said beauty is one also. And beauty is not only for physical. It also can speak for social. So I asked here, what's the chief of all capital of life? I believe you know the answer. Wisdom. Wisdom can make you not very beautiful become beautiful. Yeah. Yes. You know what to do. You know the kind of makeup to do that will fit you. Wisdom can make you know how to manage complex situations and it will turn in your favor. Nobody is disadvantaged with wisdom. Wisdom makes everybody shine. Then I said, what is the difference between life and godliness? What is the difference between life and godliness? You know, scripture says that I've come to give you life. And like all about the idea Allah says, social capital is a representation of your value, especially the intangible things. Thank you very much. God bless you. Yeah. He said, I've come to give you life and give you life abundantly. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3 says that according as his divine power has given unto us all that pertains to life and godliness. What is the difference between life and godliness from our teaching? Life and godliness. What is the difference? Do we have, do we know? Life and godliness. I wrote an article, okay, I have not posted it. Life, liberty, and living. So, you can be alive, but you are not living. Think about what I'm saying. A person can be alive, but he's not living. Let me repeat myself. Think about it. You can be alive and not living. You are just there. There are people in the hospital. They are alive, but they are not living. Do you agree with what I just said? I don't say that to ridicule anybody. I'm just saying there are people in the prison. They are alive, but they are not living. One character of someone who is living is liberty. He has choice to engage life. So, if you are alive and you are not engaging, you are not, you know, transacting with life, you are not living. You are not living. You must, what makes you alive is the engagement with life. What makes you living is what you, how you engage with life. How you interact with people. How you negotiate here. How you ask for this there. And then they bounce you. Those are the things that makes us engage in living. <laughs> so what am I trying to say from that scripture is that there's a difference between life or living and godliness. Godliness refers to God-likeness. That is spirituality. Living is everyday engagement. When you go and pay the malam selling water there, it's living. That's not spirituality. That's not godliness. Do you understand? When you take Uber and you interact with Uber, that's living. That's not godliness. Godliness is the godlike nature that a man exhibits in his everyday life. So there's such a thing called life and godliness. Godliness is the godlike nature of a man. Godliness, godlikeness is the word. So I'm simply saying that you should find where your godlike nature manifests. You should step in, separate from your regular nature, walking. Do you know what I mean? So I'm talking with you now. There's a place where I need to switch to godliness. I'm interacting with someone here, and then we hear, whoa, 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 they are coming, coming. I need to know when to enter my spiritual godlike nature and manifest the godlike nature in my inside. I want to show to you that you are living the two simultaneously. So you're at home. Something is happening naturally. You must know when to switch that this is spiritual. This is no longer ordinary. It is running simultaneously. Life and godliness. Praise the Lord. Your child or your baby might be manifesting an illness. It's part of life for a child to have headaches or pain when they are young and teething. There is a way that teething can become spiritual. You must know when to say, cast you out. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Many people don't know when to switch. Life and godliness is a switch. You can be going home, and on the day you are looking for an interview or something, maybe you are going home or you are going for an interview, that day, no vehicle for you. That's not just ordinary life. There's an attack on your, trial, your, your, your prospect that day. <laughs> Some people don't know. They don't know. 
If you ever have a chance to enter the realm of the spirit, you will hear the stories of people that have been distracted simply because one spiritual person was interested. Not every headache is headache. You must know when headache is natural. Yes, and I, I had a condition that I, I was not very happy with. It was what I ate. It was not spiritual. But if you are not careful, you can from there pass on. Yes. So you must know the balance of life and godliness. Don't mix them up. So that you can attend to the right one correctly. Please, do you understand what I'm saying here? You and your spouse, you are having issues. You are talking or talking. So somehow, she's just not hearing you. You are not hearing her. <laughs> you are speaking English. But you are not understanding what you are saying. So what am I bringing to attention? You must know the difference between life and godliness. Everybody say life and godliness. Life and godliness. Please, I will ask that question before the end of this teaching again. What is life? Look at it. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Did you see that? Life and godliness. There are things that pertain to life. There are things that pertain to godliness. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, some people are not realistic. Things are about life. As a sister, they are toasting you. Or let's say they are not toasting you. You are now saying the devil is chasing you. How are you dressing? See, but, well, they, say, but, but they should toast me. I'm a woman. It's not by that, sir. How I, that is not your spiritual. Ma, the way you are looking, nobody will toast you. Praise the Lord. I hope I hear what I'm saying here now. You say, Ma, for the last six years, nobody has asked me out. Ma, what are you looking like? Because God made it life. This is not spiritual. That a man should toast woman. It's life. Hello? Hi, Everybody you see married toasted somebody. Amen? I don't care how spiritual he looks. If he likes that, he's looking floating. He asks person, I want to marry you. If you see someone with a child, none of them is a virgin. <laughs> Hello? Hi, if you see anybody that say, we have baby. Just cancel. Virginity cancel. They know sex. They know sex. Don't come and confuse us. That's life. It's life for you to toast people. It's life for you to meet people. That's life. That's not godliness. Do you get what I'm saying? That's life. How I well are you doing with life? God gave us by his spirit all that pertains to life. Negotiation is life. Negotiating. You see a lady you like. It's life, Oga. Don't enter godliness yet. Go as for life. Dress well. Look cute. Clean up. Say hi. It's life. It's life. It's part of life for you to be disappointed too. It's part of life for people not to forget you or forgive you. You have to understand these things, please. They will help you a great deal. All right. Then the next question I have here is, what are the various ways to get in wisdom? What are the various ways to get in wisdom? Asking. That's James chapter 1 verse 5. As praying. Association. Proverbs 13 verse 20. He that laying on of hands. When the spirit of God comes upon you through laying on of hands, wisdom comes upon you. And then the fourth one is what? The fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. Job 28 28. Very clear, very clear. Thank you very much. Then how does wisdom capital affect our relationship life? What is the benefit? That's what I mean. What is the benefit of the wisdom capital? How does it affect our relationship life? So we've spoken about wisdom being a capital. How does it affect your relationship life? Whether marriage or generally. How does wisdom affect your life? That's what I'm saying. How? How does it make you? No, try. Go ahead. Oh, God, bring the microphone now. Where is it? Yeah. Take wisdom for us to know when to make progress and when not to. When not to face a challenge with spirituality or 
correct um live with life, life yes. yes as it is so I, I feel that largely it just makes you be an advantage of when to know what to do how to do it and whom to do it with mm. yes and one of the things that you have we have in our confession for this month is that we have a sound mind and we live right that's right so i feel that it having the wisdom as uh, the, the big, biggest capital for us it's got a good and um, the use in relationship is going to actually put us at, at advantage to helping us to know how to live Perfect. what to do and all that. I, I think thank you sir let me let me give you an illustration tonight so just before i came downstairs i was in the when i got here a friend of mine called me on the phone i was angry he has a situation that we were all mutual friends growing up he, in fact they were with me in virtues from when we started if he's hearing me now i'm sure he'll be laughing at the fact that i'm using it as an example but i just want to bring out to attention so for example now brother larry is an engineer he has contracts in enugu for example now he invites you brother charles to come to enugu you are an engineer too he's let's say he's the contractor he got a contract to build let's say road in enugu you are in lagos both of you are in lagos but he got contract. but because you are mutual friends from childhood he now invited you to come and see me in enugu but you know because you too are an engineer he is not the engineer he just got the contract so you are the engineer you are a civil engineer then because you know about engineering i just wanted you to come and see what i'm doing as per my friend all right as per what friend somebody say friend, friend. friend. say friend. Friend. friend say friend, friend. say friend. friend good as per friend you came to enugu to see what we are i mean what he's doing now as per friend the money you heard this guy collected is almost a billion naira you feel like, ah, one billion naira. Should you not give me something also? But we never discussed how much I will give you. Do you know it is wisdom for life to tell the person that I'm going to give you only two million naira. Though we are friends, I'm only going to give you, or tell him I'm not paying you at all from the beginning. Many friendships have been corrupted because of lack of wisdom. Tell him what you want to do. I'm not paying you. Ah, eh, now so it be. Now so, eh, come, I'll give you something, Sha. Anything I give you. You have re regulated his expectation. Many people, that's why I did not call this thing just for marriage, is lasting relationships. Because many relationships that are supposed to be blossoming are altered because of this lack of wisdom. You are thinking life is in a way that, as my friends, just come and see what I'm doing. Oga, where is my money? In our business, you know the story. People here yeah, in internal version. We write you a document absorbing us of everything that is beyond our control. You see, it doesn't matter. We're just friends. Then we see the Oga sign. I know I'm your friend. That's why you should sign. So that the friendship can stay. Yes, sir. Some of us don't have the wisdom to confront such sensitive issues because you feel that it is friendship and intimacy when you don't talk about important things that we just connect. Oga. You'll be surprised that guy that, that guy will dock you at the police station simply because you refuse to confront the matter. So you tell him, no, I'm not involved. It's from the start. You must always work with the wisdom of your relationships. That this person that I'm talking to, if he's in trouble, he will cast me. Do you know what I just said? So from the conversation go, you are working consciously. Can we document this? How much am I getting? When it comes to money, and that's why he said wisdom. Wisdom and money are very interesting things. When it comes to money in your relationships, please don't dodge the discussion. When we finish talking about how much you are compensating me with, we can continue after that. But please, how much is my money inside this one? Be clear. So that godly relationships God has set into your life will not be lost simply because you were naive. So you called him to Enugu. He is now in our hard access to buy something through you that called him to Enugu, now bought, using you, told you to buy him a car. No, he's not wrong. Shabi, he's buying things from, he was buying things online from his, so he, he said, pay, pay for me for a car, I will give you back the money. That I will give you back the money. It's causing problem now. Do you get? It's not causing tension in friendship. Me being a mutual friend, I have to now come in. 
And I told him, sir, while I know your good heart is good, that is naivety, not to discuss when are you paying me. Be clear. Be clear. Not because you like money, but be able to manage relationships. That's why I say it's life. I would like you to pay for this thing. Please pay me. It's, most Christians don't know. You are seeing a guy as a lady. He's coming over, coming over every time, buying you things. At what point do you ask him, what do you want? What do you really want? He expects you to know. You need to be able to confront. That's why I say, what is the relevance of wisdom for life? This is very key, and I pray that the Lord will help us. We have another response. How does wisdom affect your life? Kemen said, like King Solomon, wisdom can help you attract riches, people of influence, affluence, and good leadership qualities to lead your followers right. Praise the Lord. All right. So, I think I've covered all the questions I want to ask, and I have managed my time well. Yes. Um, but please, are you blessed with what I just said now? Yes, sir. Let's give the Lord a round of applause and appreciate him. So next time you are seeing that person, ask him, where is my money? Be, don't be embarrassed. It's because you don't have a good worth. You are thinking that not talking about it will fly. Okay? Talk about it. When is my, where is my money? Mama and I, we share money. I'm borrowing you. You return it back. Eh? I just bought you something. You know, she says she's borrowing me money. What I just bought you is almost half a million. You are, it's like that. Learn to have the comfort of discussing what is comfortable with the other person. Don't dodge. You want your money? When do you want it? I can't pay you this one. I'm not borrowing you. Le discuss it. And when you finish, get up and move. Don't say because it's Larry and this thing. When the money now goes, don't you see how these artists used to fight? That it was my song. It was my song. It, at that time, it did not look like that thing would be big. So he just said, it doesn't matter. Just bring it. It doesn't matter. We're friends. When it now got big, you now say, let me get the song. Go, 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 go. What happened to you? You did, not, you did not believe that that song will blow. Do you get what I'm saying? So you need to know that life is going to keep giving you questions. Negotiate at every point in time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me take us further here. So I've spent good time talking about reflections of what we've saw. Before I now, you know, because I want to close on social capital. Do you understand? And then I want to open relationships tonight. Yes, that's what I want to do. That's why I'm doing this. So let me ask one more time. Does anybody have any question? Any question whatsoever? I want to put closure to social capital as it leads into relationships. You know, anybody, any question, any kind of question. I will take it tonight so that we can make some progress. Any kind of question? Any questions? All right. In the absence of any question or while we are thinking about our questions, let's turn our Bibles to Ecclesiastes chapter 4 to verse 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 to 11. And Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. Let's start with Genesis 2, 18. And then Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 8 to 11. Let's look at what it says. Are you there? And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him an helpmate for him. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. So the Bible says in verse 21, And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. You know, I told you about making something out of something, making something out of nothing. You know, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife 
and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, and the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Verse 8 to 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 8 to 11. There is one alone, and there is not a second. Yea, he hath neither child nor brother, yet is there no end of all his labor. Neither is his high satisfied with riches. Neither saith he, for whom do I honor, I, I labor, beg your pardon, and bereave my soul of good. This is also vanity, yea, it is sore travail. Two are better than one. Please watch this. Everything in life, two is better than one. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Two. Everybody say two is better than one. Say it again. Say two are better than one. People of God, let's preach together. I say two are better than one. Why? Why, are, why is two better than one? I feel like saying why are two better than one? Why is two better than one? Because they have a good reward for their labor. The Bible says in Jeremiah 34, it says one shall chase a thousand, two shall chase ten thousand. One shall chase a thousand. Two should have chased two thousand. But it says no. Two shall chase ten thousand. One will chase a thousand. Two shall chase ten thousand. It should have been two thousand. No. But coming together, there's power in unity. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we're looking at relationships now. And please, when I say relationships, for the first part of the discussion, I'll be talking generally about relationships. And then gradually I'll be comparing it with, you know, dating relationships as we make progress. Because a lot of things in relationships are similar. The major thing that will be different between your closest friend and your wife that are of the same gender is going to be sex. You can't sleep with your friend. Or your friend should not sleep with you. But you are going to have good friends that might, could have been as close as your wife. Hello, does anybody know what I'm talking about here? Can we be real with ourselves here? Yes. Yeah, you are going to have very party party friends. I have some friends. We are not dating ourselves. But we are very close. We are very close. It's normal. It's not. It's life. It's a man. Just like you now as a brother. You married a fine wife. It's part of life that they should toast your wife. Are you aware? You say you can't handle it. Why did you marry a fine wife? It's part of the package. It's part of your social capital. Hello. Hey. Some of you are not immature for this thing. No. It's very real. If you understand it, it will split for you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You are beautiful. You think people should not greet you. It's normal. Know when it is now becoming wrong from when it's just normal. It's normal. People should uh, you not be angry. Who is this one asking out? Even till tomorrow. If your wife goes to some places, they will ask out. Sarah was being asked that at age 85 or something. Sarah. <laughs> By a king. King. Let me say this also. Women, you need to know the effect you have on men. Most women don't understand this. Most men too don't have the knowledge of what they do on women. Do you know you make a woman feel like a woman by the way you talk to her? Most women find their discovery in how, especially the, one of the greatest gifts you can give a woman is your masculinity. I'm telling you, sir. Don't give a woman your sheepish side. She has that. She needs the strong you. Glory to God. <laughs> the strong you. You say, we are just human. You see, sweetheart. Oh, God. There's a time as a man to stand up and say, hey, this, this is how it's going to go. Don't be lying with your wife feeling like you are all weaklings. Praise the Lord. I'll get into that very soon. I have it ready for you. But tonight we've seen how scripture says, let's finish that reading. Have I finished it? Have we done verse 11? So let's read on. Verse 10. Verse 9. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth. For he hath not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone. And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Praise the Lord. What the scripture is saying to us is that two will always be better than one. 
That means being alone in your life is not a good position. God said it is not good that man should be alone. When people are asking you out and you are not saying yes to them, let me say something to you. Don't chase them away. Let people come into your life. Praise the Lord. Just classify them into different rankings. That's what I want to share with us tonight. You will need as many... You don't need more enemies in life. You need more friends. Are you hear what I'm saying here? So don't always chase just about everybody away. Don't. There are people you will need in your life that you don't know their value yet. It's in a couple of months from now, you will now know the value that... Ah, one of my friends, I just met him the other day. You know? We just met back after a long while. And then he sent me a note that said, Pastor, I need you to help me do a reference. Just to, and I'm like, if you did not see me in court, the people that you are meeting every day, they are a deposit of capital to you. How you sustain that relationship can determine. You say, I don't want to talk to him. Who do you want to talk to? You need everybody. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Can I hear your amen? amen? Now, the thing is that you classify everybody. Don't give everybody equal access to your life. That is what is wrong. Don't give everybody, even in this church, I don't give everybody equal access. It's the truth. It's the truth. There are some people that I don't want them to come to my house. We'll meet you in church till I see you next time when God's bride. Some people can come to my house, can almost, I can almost send them to my bedroom. Access. What am I saying? You need to know that everyone that comes your way is a potential capital for your success. How you discover that friendship, how you make it count. Let me tell you something. Everybody, you're about to say, Omoburuku Lodjote. Have you heard that before? There is a day at the bus stop that one bad boy that smokes is the one that will defend you. The blow you can't blow, he will help you throw the blow. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. The blow that I can't blow. How will I be throwing this? You catch me at bus stop. <laughs> Just imagine. Is that not shameful? And you understand? Feel that. Feel that. Feel that. <laughs> the guy looks at me and says, She pastor, me learn pastor, man. Pastor, if you want to In my own attempt to be nice, I say, Mark Bernetti, pastor, if you want to Inside me, I'll be happy. Yes, that the blow I cannot blow, God gave me a Samson. What am I saying? There are people in your life, they'll be useful for the day of need. Don't just throw everybody. When you meet people, there's, for, there's a reason. It might be for a season. It might be for a lifetime. Yeah. There's some of my classmates I met. They've still... One, we're going for another name in tomorrow. Let me, if I guess I forget the, is your, He called me today. He said, this is a colonel in the army. He said, Reverend, I just want to let you know my whole family is grateful to you. My not say we grew up together as ex-boys. I just want you to know I respect you as God's servant. And you know you have come to become our family pastor. He was just talking. It is friendship for a reason that the day you will need it, you will be surprised. He will pull a drone of people for your favor. But he said, no, 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 no. This one, my friend used to smoke. My, this one used to smoke. That smoke that is smoking, one day will be useful for your destiny. The, it will be such a way that you can't smoke the smoke. But when it was inside, the people talking about what you went for, they were all smoking and he had. And he now, because he could handle chimney and sushi. Sashi, I mean, sushi. <laughs> sushi, sha, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Did I say sushi? <laughs> Forgive me. You understand what I'm saying? He could handle the shisha. Came outside and told you, Omo, those people are planning evil for you. But you have thrown him away because he's a secret man. He, no, he never called you to come and smoke cigar. That's why when you have social capital, you will not be afraid of such relationships. He smokes, you don't smoke. The Lord bless you. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Now, there's such relationships, you think that since he's not a Christian, since he's not a Christian, why do you want to talk with him? There are people that are not Christians you have to talk to. God talks with Satan. God talks with Satan. Eh? Do you understand what I'm trying to say here? Yeah? Because you don't have this social capital we're talking about, you're only selecting Christian friends. How do you want to progress? You're not living only as Christians. You're living in a real world. Are we talking tonight? Yes, so many things are locked in those people you call friends that are not believers. 
information that they will tell you better than your closest friend that you think is a believer. Are you hearing what I'm saying, sir? I didn't say you should go and join them do yao yao or uh, uh, cashback or what do you call it? Cash, cash up or something. That's not what we're saying. Praise the Lord. Are we talking tonight? Is it making some sense to your spirit? Learn that your purpose in life, you have a side of life and a side of godliness. Daniel did not stay only with Christians. You can't survive with just uh, only Christian, only Christian, only Christian. I just want to be dealing with Christian. Now, do you mean I, I never said you can walk into unbelievers to work with them. But you cannot really make your Christianity count just by dealing with Christians. In fact, you are supposed to go to the world and then they will testify that he's a Christian. Are you getting what I'm saying here? So, your real value is not that, ah, I have friends. You need friends in all spheres. All spheres. All spheres. Know that everyone that comes your way, especially when you're prayed about it, God brought them your way for a reason. It might be for a season. It might be for a lifetime. Yeah, I don't know that guy. Oh, mark that friendship. Mama knows. If I meet someone today, she, she knows. Can I have your number? I don't know when I will need you. But it has proven very useful for me many times. I don't know if anybody's like that too. It has proven very useful. I just took that guy's number. I never thought it was useful. Though. But it's that guy that did that business. It's that guy that did this one. You don't wonder, ah, was that the reason why we met? There might even be more reasons in front. What am I trying to draw your attention to, sir? Maximize your life. Through the relationships God brings your way. Don't disregard anybody. Put value on everybody. Can I hear your amen, please? Put value on... Don't ever think someone is too small for you or too irrelevant for your future. Let God determine that. Let who? God determine that. There are people that helped the gospel go far that we never thought would be useful. But they are the ones that kept the gospel. There are friends in your life now that in a couple of months from now you will know their value. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, sir. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. So I'm starting with this discussion to say that God wants to bring people into your life. Can I hear your amen, please? Amen. Please say better amen. amen. God will be bringing people. So how you treat each person matters. That's why I said wisdom is the capital. Because with wisdom, when you meet one, you say, hey, how are you? You know? And in talking, you know that this one, I'll put him in this fire in my life. He has to graduate. Loving everybody is compulsory. Trusting everybody is not. Did you hear what I just said? You should love everybody, but trusting everybody is not compulsory. You have a duty and a compelling uh, or a compulsory not notice to love everybody. But trusting everybody is not. You must let people earn your trust. Can I hear your amen? amen? That earning of trust is, you will see some unbelievers, quote and unquote, where you call unbelievers, will bring better delivery to you than some Christians. In financial matters, I could almost trust so-called unbelievers better than some Christians. Yeah. Because he will deliver to you without com you know, compromise. Some will tell you, I like my money. Just give me my money, but I'll do your job. The believer will say, eh, God is faithful, God is faithful, and he's chopping you. God is faithful, God is faithful, and he's chopping you. God is faithful, God is, God is good, God is good, and he's good in you. Do you get what I'm saying, sir? So I want us to rise from just limiting our relationships to just purely um, spiritual relationships and Christian relationships. You will need people that you don't know before. There's this guy in Computer Village. I don't know him before. I've never met him. Maybe I'll meet him this weekend. He's getting married this weekend. Um, this is my Chris. You know Chris now. Yeah. This guy is on phone. No? I said I want to buy. He advertised a phone. I wanted to buy Mama a phone, the one she was using before this new one. She just changed. So all night I was checking for a phone for her. I wanted a good phone, you know, and I didn't want to necessarily. Long and short, shot, I shall approached him. Do you have a phone? He said yes. That is. In, he now told me that actually the phone the camera is not working, you know, the eye signature is not working, eh? face idea, eh? you know, so 
That's how I just managed him. I even thought it was one low-key guy. You need to know this guy has done me favors that I cannot be grateful enough for. I've not met him till now. But almost my guys, those you know him now, Chris. You know Chris. He's getting married this weekend. Interestingly, you will not believe he has done me so, so much good that I, I really thought that friendship would turn out. Don't throw people away. You hear what I just said? Don't throw people away. One day, a friend of mine came from the U.S. and he was at Sheraton Hotels and everybody did not go and see him. I went. Now he smokes, he does all that. When I got there, he was like, my reverend is here, my reverend is here. Everybody, oh, you know, thank God he knows. Yeah, yes, of course. Ah, yes. it's not yesterday, no. You know, so when I got there, we just go. When people saw the picture, ah, Reverend, you went to see this guy? Yes. Yes. Sir, don't discriminate with your love. You are not loving because the person can receive it. You are loving because you are love. Don't give love only because people can receive it. You are loving because it is you to love. Praise the Lord. Don't discriminate in relationships. We are starting a new discussion on relationships starting from tonight already. I want to show you something about making relationships last. Almost every relationship God sends to your life has a reason, maybe for a season, and maybe for a lifetime. That's what I want to start with tonight. Are you blessed, please? Are you blessed tonight, please? I want us to pray and say, Father, let me identify the fortunate relationships of my life. Open up your mouth and make a prayer. Say, Father, grant to me grace, Lord, to identify the relationships of my life the ones you have given to me. Can you talk to God tonight? God has sent people to your life for, your re for a reason, for a season, and maybe for a lifetime. Can you talk to God tonight? I say, Lord, grant me an understanding of, Lord, the relationships you have sent to my life.